In this video, I'll be making this uh, six foot console table out of walnut. It's not a hard build and it's a beautiful table. It's been uh, very popular with our customers, so I've made it many times. And I'm gonna take you all the way through the build process. So let's get started. This walnut that I'm working with, I bought in a bundle from uh, a local supplier. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, definitely not top grade lumber. But uh, by the time I get done with it, it, uh, it obviously comes out looking really good. So even though it's, uh, it's squared and planed up, um, it has all these rough spots. It's, it's eight quarter material, so it's two inches thick. Um, so I'm going to take it through the joiner and uh, get all that nastiness cleaned up off of it. Uh, it'll end up being a little over an inch and a half when I get done. I'm going to run a face through there and one edge, get it straight and square. And I've got to glue up, you know, four panels, two uh, short ones for the legs and two long ones for the top and the shelf. So obviously these pieces are for the legs and then the longer ones are for the uh, the top and the shelf and right now they're all the same length and I'll just cut them down later and the joiner and the planer are the are the worst things in the shop for filling up that dust collector now we're gonna move over to the planer and uh, run all these boards through it and uh, get that third side cleaned up and most importantly make sure they're all the same thickness you know that planer is cutting from the top it's gonna it's gonna make sure they're all the same same dimensions so now moving on to the table saw for the fourth edge all these boards are different sizes and they're even different sizes from one end to the other on the same board so I, I measure both ends and obviously pick my smallest size set my table saw up for that cut and each board I've got to do that with because they're all they're all different sizes as you'll see you know, this is a, a decent sized one here. And the next one's pretty close to the same. Measure both ends of it. Change my table saw and, and cut this one. The next one ends up being quite a bit skinnier. And uh, I also get some, uh, you know, the, the worst parts of the board cut off in this process also. And you see that block sitting on my table saw there on the corner? That's going to come, uh, that's going to come in handy later. I have ran that through with all the rest of the material through the joiner and the planer and uh, it's the same thickness as these pieces and I'll show you what I do with that in just a little bit so right now I'm getting all my boards uh, figured out I'm I've, with them all being different thicknesses I've got to or different widths I've got to move them around and uh, until I get the top is going to be you know just slightly bigger than the uh, wider than the shelf um, so I'm trying to pick my best boards out for that top but also, uh, you know, get the right width for me. You see that spot right there? That's, uh, you know, several of these pieces have uh, spots like that in them. And I'm just going to face those down. And once your piece is done, you're, you're never going to see those. So, uh, you know, like, like I said earlier, I, I hate wasting lumber. And, uh, you know, that has a beautiful side to it. So uh, the ugly side I just face down. And there's even some spots like that in the legs. And they are a little more visible because even though it's facing in, uh, if you look closely enough, you know, you, you can see some of that. But, uh, but I'm happy with the, with the end result. So, uh, you know, here I'm, I'm gluing up one of my panels. I use these small clamps just to kind of get everything lined up on the ends. Had a little issue with this one getting it, uh, getting it down where I, where I needed it to be. So obviously I'm gluing up two long panels and two short panels. Get that out of the way, get the last short panel done. And you see one of those you can see one of those bad sides on uh, on that short piece there, and I'm clipping those around so I can hide it in the middle of the panel.
Now this is the next day. I'm going to get my dried up glue off my uh, off my workbench. Get the dried up dried up glue uh, off the panel, and then I'm going to use a belt sander to uh, to clean up the remaining glue and uh, any inconsistencies in my glue up. You know, if my boards weren't uh, weren't perfectly lined up, I'm going to clean those up right now with this uh, with this belt sander. For me, it seems like it's a lot more aggressive across the grain like this. So uh, I, uh, you know, I sand across the grain, but at the end, you've got to come back and sand straight like I'm doing here because it uh, it's going to scratch it up pretty good as it's uh, as it's sanding across the grain like that. So I make one more final pass with the grain, and I didn't video my final sanding. Uh, I'm sure if you watch build videos at all, you you seen that a thousand times uh, and here I'm, I'm prepping to uh, fill all these bad spots with epoxy and I'm going to show you some examples of what they look like when they got done when I get done but once I get once again I was you know this is not number one grade uh, material at all but after you uh, get it all milled up and then uh, fill these bad spots in with epoxy and there's just, just some examples of what it looks like you know when that epoxy is uh, is all cleaned up and the project is finished um, we get all of it. For me, it just adds character. I, I, I love that stuff, and uh, yeah, I, I don't mind working with a lower grade lumber because I actually I think it adds character to the to the look of the end. You, it's a better end result to me. So uh, all the epoxy's dry. This is the next day. Come back and hit it with a belt sander again to get all that epoxy off of there. Now I'm gonna do a final pass through the table saw and this is just going to be the two legs and the top shelf you see I'm resetting here because uh, I was a little too wide for that one so I've got to go back and, and cut my other ones again to get them to that width so this is just the top and the two legs I'm going to cut those three pieces to the same width and in the shelf I'm going to cut uh, a half an inch skinnier so it'll have a, a quarter inch uh, it'll be a quarter inch in on each side so I've, I'm using my uh, track saw here to uh, to cut my 45s on the ends. This is the top that I'm cutting 45s on, and I'm cutting it right at six feet along the the long side. So I've got my track saw set over at a 45. I had a little bit of trouble there, but uh, fortunately it didn't didn't screw up my cut. But at a 45, these boards were thick enough that it wouldn't reach all, quite all the way through. And I, I can't remember exactly what the dimension was. But uh, I had to finish that cut with a handsaw. And you can see it's uh, there's a little bit left there. And I'll clean that up with a sander. And I do screw one of those up and, uh, and have to recut them. And luckily my legs were long enough uh, that I could recut that. And then this, that's this one right here. I'm going to have to cut it again. And I think I messed it up. I actually messed that up with the handsaw. As I was, as I was handsawing, I cut, in, you know, I got too far into my 45. And uh, instead of leaving a lip, I, I got into it a little bit. So uh, I'm, I'm cutting it again to get that cleaned up. And it came out good the second time. This was a pain when there was just barely, you know, barely anything there that I cut off on that second pass. Uh, it was not easy getting it off with the with the handsaw, but there was too much there to to just sand off. So I'm cutting that little bit off with the handsaw, and then I'll I'll sand it again. And this is just a test fit to see how my 45s came out before I I do my final cut on the bottom of the legs to get them the final length. And everything looks good. The uh, you know I'm happy with my joints, so I'm going to go ahead and get those cut. I think I made this table 34 inches tall, so uh, from the the long end of that uh, of that 45 to the bottom of the leg is is 34 inches. And now I'm measuring the uh, the inside dimensions of that 45 on my top. And what I'm doing is figuring out how long my shelf needs to be. I'm taking that measurement and I'm adding three quarters of an inch to each side, so an inch and a half altogether. 
and that's going to be the total length of my shelf because it's going to have a three quarter inch pin on each end. So this is a little jig that I made for my uh, for my router. Uh, it's just a scrap piece of plywood I had in the shop and a piece of oak and uh, some bolts for that uh, for that fence to slide back and forth. Now I'm setting my depth here. And this is that little piece that I was talking about that I ran through the uh, joiner and the planer with with all the other pieces. And this is this is why I did that so I can use it as a as a test. Now I'm checking my depth here, and that's good. And now I'm going to do the other side of the tenon, and then I can check the thickness of my tenon and make sure uh, the depth set on my router is is correct also. So this little piece is just to, to make sure all the settings are correct on my on my router jig and it all comes out good so I'm going to move on to the actual shelf and cut the tenons on it. So you see how this jig works and it's uh, it's pretty nice. I you know for, for as simple as it is it uh, it works really well. Now what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm setting my depth on this square and uh, I'm going to come down and score the edge here with a knife and I'm doing that so when I come out that end with my router I'm not going to have any blowout um, you know if you don't score it like that a lot of times wood will chip off as that router comes out and just make that edge you know ugly so uh, if you if you take a, an extra second and score that where you're going to pop out there with a knife a lot of times most of the time it uh, it prevents that problem. You can see here it looks like I'm all the way up against my project already if you look at the fence but I'm holding it at an angle so this end is is touching my uh, my shelf there but the other side I'm holding out at an angle and each time I make a pass then that just makes it a little more stable for me. You can see here better where I'm holding it at an angle and each pass I just hold it at a little less of an angle until I'm all the way in and flat against the project. With that fence riding against it every time it just makes it a little easier. Alright now this is, uh, we, we're moving on to the leg here and we're going to cut uh, oh, the mortises in the leg that those tenons are going to go into. I'm using three different squares to set that up. I've got one square for uh, uh, for one long side of my mortise, and then that short one to, to mark where I'm starting and stopping. And I use I set this to the thickness thickness of my uh, tenon, and then I'm going to set this fourth this third uh, square to that dimension, and that way I can see you know my entire mortise there. Now, I didn't show setting the fence up, but I will on the second pass. It's going to take two passes to make this mortise. Obviously, multiple passes in each pass, as I, I'm going to plunge a little deeper each time here. But uh, after I get this, this one cut, I will leave this setting, move on to my other leg, and go ahead and do that exact same cut on it. And on this one, I don't have to set, I don't have to measure, I don't have to mark the entire mortise. All I need to mark is my start point and my stop point. Now, if you don't get those exact, if you go a little past them, that's not a big deal because your uh, your shelf is going to hide that. You see there, that's I uh, moved my fence back and set up for that second cut, and I'm doing a little plunge right in the middle until I'm happy with my setting. Any any mistake I make there is going to be hidden by the shelf, and it's not going to affect the overall mortise. So uh, I just do a little plunge right in the middle and measure it and make sure I'm happy with the, the width of it. And then I go ahead and do the whole thing. Now here I'm using a wood rasp to round over the uh, the corners on that tenon so they match you know what, what the uh, router cut on the mortise. I think it's easier to, uh, to round those corners over than uh, to, to square up the mortise hole. So... Uh, that's just the way I do it. It seems to be quite a bit easier. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact, just as long as it, it fits in your hole. 
So uh, I'm gonna put my roundovers just on the shelf before I put it, before I assemble, because I wouldn't be able to get the ends of it after it's put together. And now we're gonna start assembly. So I'm moving that leg over there because I want all my best sides facing the same direction. Both sides are good, but uh, you know, I, one side is better than the other. So uh, I flipped that leg around to get the best side facing out and uh, getting that tenon put into the mortise and then we'll attach the top. And we're gonna leave this whole thing in clamps overnight and then I'll come back in the morning. So, you know, this 45 on top here, right at this point, all we're doing is gluing that together. And believe it or not, after you take the clamps off, that's a pretty strong joint, even though that's ingrained to ingrain. But uh, I'll come back in the morning and pin that with some dowels, and that ends up, you know, being good. So I'm going to get all kinds of clamps on here, and, and most of the, the majority of this is to make sure that 45 is closed up as well as it can be across there, because obviously that's going to be very visible. So I'm going to use 102 clamps on this thing to get that closed up as well as I can. Getting some glue squeeze out before it dries. Now this is the next day. We're gonna get all the clamps off. I'm gonna put the uh, the dowels in, clean up the 45s a little bit. And we're getting close to being done. It's all assembled. So there's a shot right now of the of the 45 not cleaned up. It came out really nice, but it'll look better when I get done. So I'm using two different squares here to uh, to mark where my dowels are going to go. I'm just going to put one in the center and then one off of each end. So I'm marking them, and I'm just going to use a, a nail punch. Uh, to put a little hole there for my for my drill to set in so it doesn't wander on me. And you can see I've got a chunk of wood on my drill bit that just to keep that keeps me from going in too deep. And those those holes don't have to be perfectly straight. All you're ever gonna see of them is this end where the dowel's sticking out. Uh, so just as long as you don't you know blow out the your your top on the top or bottom, you're you're good. But you don't have to be perfectly straight. So I'm, I'm going to put three dowels on each side. And all this extra glue you see running down the, the face, I'm going to use my finger and use some of that to, to fill in any little gaps I have in my corner here. And you can see in that picture what the corner looks like when I get done. So right here, you know, I, I've, got some, I've got some little gaps and I'm filling those in with glue. And now I've got a little a cup of walnut sawdust that I'm rubbing in there. And then I'm gonna come back with the sander while that glue is still wet and sand all this. And you know, obviously while that sander is sanding, it's uh, it's creating dust also. And it just mixes with that glue and, and fills up, fills out any any spaces that aren't perfect. So that glue's still wet while I'm sanding here. And you know, it, if it ruins your piece, of, it, if it ruins your sandpaper, it's not that big of a deal. But uh, definitely worth it to me to, to get everything cleaned up and pretty. And you can see there that uh, that came out looking pretty darn good. So now I'm going to put 40, a, a, a small round over on the whole piece. And I did not film finishing this thing. So you know, I just used Rubio Monocoat on it. And uh, I'm sure there's a thousand videos out there using Rubio Monocoat. But uh, here's the finished project. I think it came out really good. If you guys have any questions or comments, would love to see those in the bottom. Uh, like and share would be outstanding. Uh, follow us. I, you know, we, we build for a living. We've got a storefront. Uh, thanks for watching.